was the chair of the H3 Africa Consortium Data and Biospecimen Access Committee, as well as the founder of the Global Emerging Pathogen Consortium, which was entrenched at the peak of the Ebola outbreak to address biosecurity concerns in Africa. He was a consultant to the Lagos State Biosecurity and Genomics Project in 2014. He was a member of the board and honorary professor to the Center of Biosecurity Studies, University of the West Indies, Cave Hill Campus, Barbados, Caribbean in 2018. 2018, as well as a professor of medicine at the Nigerian Institute of Medical Research in Lagos, Nigeria. Akia Bayami was a member of the African Academy of Science Committee on Data Governance and also the lead consultant on the Biobank. Biosecurity and Biodata Rescue Project in Sierra Leone and Lagos, Nigeria. He is consulting, pardon me, he is consulting for the Lagos State Biosecurity Project and the West Africa Health Organization Biosecurity and Biobanking Framework to service the ECOWAS member. Professor Akin Abayami is now the Honorable Commissioner for Health in Lagos State, Nigeria, under the administration of Governor Babajide Sonwo Olu. So without further ado, I would love to bring to our screen our professor to take the stage. Please help us make welcome Professor Akin Abayomi. Thank you very much and good morning to all the participants in this very important um, summit on um, really centering on waste, environment and health. So before I go on, thank you for that uh, very elaborate introduction. Um, I just want to do a sound check. Can you hear me? Yes, we can, sir. Yes, we can. Okay, can you see my screen, please? We can, yes, sir. All right. Once again, I appreciate the introduction. And I'm here representing the Lagos State Government and the Executive Cabinet under the leadership of a very able governor, Mr. Baba Jide Sonwulu, who has a very aggressive uh, health and environment um, as has been tested during the COVID-19 outbreak to manage an environment and biosecurity threat to the mega city of Lagos and I got Nigeria and then I will zero in onto Lagos which is where I'm based and see how we can unpack this very important issue of environmental integrity. So let me try now to move my slides. So let's look at the setting. So it's something such as waste management, and you can see on the left uh, both biodegradable and non biodegradable. And then some of the ways in which we can address some of these things. And if, if we don't address them, then we may result in some uh, very complicated and very complex consequences to the ecosystem. And of course, to us as human beings that reside in the ecosystem. So, I'm under, I understand that we have some internet instability. So if that happens, please just alert me and I will pause till the internet becomes uh, intact again. So, so far, I hope you can hear me. 
Yes, so far so good. All right, thank you very much. So what is the background and why are we so concerned, particularly in Lagos and Nigeria and Africa? Well, if you look at this graph, and it's, you know, it may come as a surprise to many people, it certainly surprised me. Um, you can look at the projected increase in the population of Africa. We're expected to go, we're now in 2020. You can see we've already hit over a billion. And over the next 40 to 50 years, um, we're going to be approaching 4.2 billion people on the continent of Africa. Now, just juxtapose that to Europe in blue. And you can see Europe. is more or less stable and in fact they're on climatic crisis that we're seeing um, and we look at Nigeria for example where we've got a significant drying of the northern part of the country forcing all kinds of factors and conflicts and we superimpose that on the global climatic change and we we more or less have an environment where we are contracting in our resources, and yet we are uh, the potential of producing um, larger and larger amounts of waste. So we have this phenomenon of rural urban migration, and the biggest attraction is to Lagos. So for whatever reason, whether it's environmental, whether it's political, whether it's search for economic opportunities, Lagos just seems to be the end point of rural to um, urban migration. So when you look at all these factors together, the increased uh, demographic potential of Africa, you look at this phenomenon called rural urban migration, then what is going to happen? We're going to have a continent of mega cities. And we already see that phenomenon happening very clearly across West Africa and the continent. And this sets us up for major health toxicity and biosecurity threats, just like we've experienced in the last six months, where Lagos and much of Africa have come under a very challenging um, situation with COVID-19. And, you know, Lagos is just a keg of gunpowder waiting to go off by virtue of the heavy population and the reduced access to sanitation, water, and fresh air, making these biosecurity threats, uh, making Lagos, for example, as a megacity, very, very vulnerable to biosecurity threats through its lack of resilience. So across the spectrum, we see that these megacities are going to have or have typical features. They're usually poorly planned. They lack necessary infrastructure. I'm talking in general across Africa now. Many of these mega cities have insufficient clean water. A lot of them rely on wood and fossil fuel for their energy. The air is becoming increasingly toxic. Our waterways are becoming toxic. Our streams are dying. And we've got chemical and sewage pollution on the surface water table and there is severe pollution in our seas and our coastal cities. And all of these combined together produce this toxic environment that can result in silent disease and, and human toxicity. Now, Lagos has over 100 slum areas, which are home to a large percentage of our people in Lagos. And some of these typical see we've all seen, you know, where there's crowding, there's, there's environmental dumping of waste, a mixture of biodegradable and degradable. And some of our people live in this kind of environment. So what is the concept of waste? You know, waste is a product or a substance which is no longer suited for its intended use. Um, the natural ecosystem does produce waste in itself, but one of the waste products of of the ecosystem, you might be surprised to know, is oxygen. We also produce, uh, nature produces carbon dioxide and dead organic matter. Now, most of these waste products of nature 
are used for food by the ecosystem. So when we want to classify waste, we base it on the risk related to the environment and to human health as a whole. So for the producer or the holder, assessing whether material is waste or not is important. And then we need to define the relevance in the collection analysis of the waste so that we can become part of the international community and have good clean data on what is our waste, what is the quantity of our waste, what is the impact on the environment, and what is our disposal strategy. A lot of countries are able to export their waste and they move their waste from higher economic environments to lower economic environments because they're able to manip manipulate global movement in that manner. And we must be careful that we are not subject to that kind of dumping of waste as we are so accustomed to seeing in the last 20 or 30 um, years. Uh, these kinds of things are still happening and we need to be very, very vigilant about these kinds of events. So many countries have definitions of waste. You know, across Europe, it's usually a material considered to be garbage in Russia. They define it as a material waiting to be reused. I think that's a very interesting way of looking at waste. And then the US have a very complex definition of waste, um, cutting across all kinds of um, products, both from domestic and industrial um, activity. Now let's look at waste management practices in Nigeria. So we have very few sewage, water and solid um, management plants. Uh, liquid waste arise from domestic activity. Uh, we have, you know, a serious problem of human excrement in some areas like markets and other public places. These human excrements uh, and animal excrements are mixed with solid waste, thus creating a challenge for recycling. And our people generally litter the environment with no civic concern or enforcement penalties. And households or companies or industries are not compelled to separate their waste. Is that what? So households are not, and industry are not compelled on a, under rigid environmental laws to comply. So let's look at the environment for a second. Sorry, Professor, do you mind unmuting yourself, please? Uh, Professor Akin, we can't hear you. Could, yes, thank you. Okay, I'm sorry. Nature's capital and gifts are essentially um, very good for the ecosystem. We have the production of clean water. We have the production of food, waste assimilation, carbon dioxide absorption, and maintaining our fertile and arable lands, erosion control, recreation. So you see, nature is always trying to cleanse the earth and cleanse the ecosystem. So these are the free gifts that are given to us by nature. And the capital can be calculated. So the value of nature has been estimated to be about $124 trillion a year. And when you add all these gifts from nature, this is the value of nature. So when we are essentially um, creating the weakness of the ecosystem to produce these natural gifts. And then on top of it, we are 
producing excessive toxins from our day-to-day -day activity, either domestic or, or industrial, we have a compounding problem. We have excessive input into the environment of waste and a reduced ability of the environment to cope with that waste. So if you look at this graph, you can see that over the last 100 years across the West African region, what we call the Guinea Savannah or the Guinea Forest Belt, you can see that at the turn of the last century, 1900, we had 700,000 square kilometers of thick forest. And over the period of the pre-colonial era into the post-colonial era, and as up to 2013, that amount has reduced by 90%. So we've weakened nature's ability to absorb our toxicity by about 90% as of 2013. I now understand that that figure has dropped below above 95%. So we have reduced our resilience to cope with the environmental toxicity and we see this image all the time. We see logs floating around in the lagoon of Lagos and we look at this Anybody who has a clear understanding of what this represents, this represents the absolute degradation of our environment and massive deforestation, which is complicating how we as human beings are going to fare in the holistic ecosystem. So let's look at the air we breathe. So this is a familiar scene, excessive production of burnt organic material, excessive production of fossil fuel, either for energy or from mobility. I don't know that there's any house in, in Lagos that does not have a generator or two. And if each of those houses is producing this kind of emission, then it's not surprising that we see these kinds of atmospheric impacts across the city of Lagos and across any mega city in Africa. So we look at the comparative between other major cities around the world, and you can see that we're doing quite badly, you know, amongst the league of heavy pollutants globally. And these are typical uh, smog pictures around these mega cities globally. So we're amongst the big boys when we're looking at environmental or air pollution globally. And when you look at the WHO figures, you can see that um, we are really, um, we're, we're, not, we're only supposed to have 10 parts per million of sulfur in our air that we breathe. And in Nigeria, we're ranging between 50 and 500. So we're certainly um, between uh, five to 100 times uh, more. We have more toxicity in our air by between five to 100 times above the normal limit. Now let's look at our health, our earth, our water, our streams. You know, this is not an untypical scene anywhere in a mega city in Nigeria. These streams used to be alive. They used to have living organisms. They used to have fish and aquatic ecosystems. Now they're so toxic that nothing on, nothing on this planet can live in here except dangerous pathogens. Our coastal cities are beginning to look like this. You know, this is a this is a picture I took in one of the West African coastal cities. You know, they, you can see how how polluted our beaches have become. And then we home in onto health, and we see this very very um, very sad situation all the time, where we have medical waste, which is especially dangerous to the community in terms of transmission of communicable diseases or, or chemical medical waste that's just disposed of without good um, regulatory and uh, systemic um, uh, processes. And that just goes into our, our, our dumps without uh, care or, or control. Now, it's very important to look at our surface water. So every household or every industry produces a waste and that waste is not removed in the appropriate way. And every time there's a bit of rain, that waste, whether it's a heavy metal from our discarded electronics or it's fossil fuel from our diesel, our diesel generators or from 
um, our, our, our mobility, that all percolates downwards into the water aquifers and they migrate downwards as well as our sewage. So every home that is producing sewage into our septic tanks, well, where else does it go but into the waterways <clears throat> underneath, <clears throat> underneath the surface of the earth? So our water, for example, our, our groundwater in Lagos has become toxic. It's almost unusable for human uh, domestic um, reasons. And even for our livestock, it's very dangerous to use this kind of water. So some of the current practices we have are very dangerous to the environment and can have catastrophic health implications. And so these are the themes agenda of Mr. Governor, uh, Mr. Governor Babajide Somolu. And right there, you can see the second theme is health and environment. And this government has had the foresight to see the linkages between the health and between health systems and environmental systems. And so we're working very closely with our counterparts in the Ministry of Health and Environment, Urban Planning and Agriculture to produce a very robust agenda along the themes uh, ma mandate of this government. So we have developed in this manner between ourselves and the ministries that I've just referred to what we call the One Health Paradigm. Clearly understanding that there are linkages be between climate, desertification, shortage of fresh water, loss of biodiversity and stratospheric pollution, which all center into um, creating an unhealthy environment for human beings. So you cannot look at health, human health, in isolation, you have to look at it holistically. And you are only as healthy as the environment you live in, and you're only as healthy as the food that you eat. So if your environment is toxic, and if the food that you eat by virtue of the food chain, which our toxicity all goes through the food chain, because your animals and your plants are all um, being absorbing this toxicity as well, because they're in the environment, and we consume that and we breathe in the toxicity, we drink in the toxicity. And when you couple that with the tox toxicity in form of stress that is in these mega cities, then you generally have an unhealthy human population in these kinds of environments. So a typical example, we had a situation in Lagos where our sewages contaminated our wells or our superficial water aquifers and this water was pumped up. So we had septic tanks from the neighboring environment of a very popular secondary school in Lagos. And, you know, bacteria inside the sewage system managed to get into the water system of the well or the, or the, um, or the sinkage. And that was pumped to the surface. And this boarding school children were, were, were exposed to very, very dangerous pathogens with significant resistance to antibiotics because we have very weak laws that govern our dispensation and our um, uh, access to to strong antibiotics so we have a phenomenon called antimicrobial resistance where we're developing what we call the superbugs and these superbugs get into our water system which we can consume and it causes major problems in our environment so this is a typical example of how waste affects our environment and affects us directly, causing significant pathology. So Africa needs an urgent city and rural development master plan. We need to, first of all, have a better way of planning our cities because we anticipate our demographic explosion. We have to manage our urban to rural migration we have to empower our rural communities to, to uh, retard this rural to urban migration. We need to uh, embark on a very aggressive environmental restoration strategy, and we need a movement plan. Now, when you look at all these forces that are threatening to make a very unhealthy environment, and you compound that with the crisis we have in Africa in terms of our health workforce, we all know the problem in terms of 
we're not producing enough doctors and healthcare professionals. And the very, the very little that we're producing gets swept away in what we describe as the external brain drain. And so that gives us a problem. And if you look at this graph, you can see the acceptable ratio of human uh, healthcare professionals to population. And you see the threshold there of about four healthcare workers per 1,000 population. And most parts of the developed world have a very nice ratio of health professionals to population. But in sub-Sahara Africa, we're doing very badly at less than one uh, healthcare professional to every 1,000 population. So where you have an environment where your, your environment is toxic, you're creating lots of problems for the human beings that live in that ecosystem. And then you don't have a system that's able to respond to the health consequences of this situation. Then you've got a double-edged sword there. So the minimum requirement for a healthy waste management management system, first of all, is to reduce and reuse our waste. And we need to have a very clear way of segregating our waste from biological to uh, toxic heavy metals to radioactivity to uh, waste plastic and all those and uh, industrial effluent. And then we need to go through a process of waste management, either pretreatment, collection and storage in dependable containerized areas compatible with the content of the waste. And then safe transportation to where those particular categories of waste can be professionally degraded or professionally sequestered from the environment. And so you need a whole process on the right hand side of waste to wealth in terms of recycling, composting, uh, sanitary strategies for landfilling. You don't just dump anything in a landfill because I've told you when it rains, that land, the, the, the toxic elements of what you put there start to percolate down into the earth and create major toxicity to our water aquifers. And, you know, if you do some water analysis of our aquifers, you see that there is heavy pollution with with um, bio, with fossil fuel um, derivatives and heavy metals from our digital disposal, disposal of our digital hardware. So essentially, we need to create a green way of thinking. We need to be cognizant of the impact of these toxicities on our environment. It may be a slow death that you're experiencing. You can't imagine this amount of toxic build up in our human population, eventually we're going to get the long-term consequences of an increasingly poisonous environment on the health, wealth of our people. And of course, if we put our next generation from the moment they're conceived to their early livelihood within an environment, and if these next generation or our next human capital are exposed to these kinds of toxic environments, then we have uh, a serious problem ahead of us. So it's time to take stock. It's time to put in place some very serious strategic initiatives. And we must bind these with, with laws, guidelines, and policies. And there must be punitive repercussions to anybody, whether you are a civilian, whether you're an industrialist, uh, whether you're producing nuclear or heavy metal waste, there must be consequences to your impact on the environment. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Professor Akin Abayomi. That was an amazing uh, keynote address. And I really, really appreciate the, the last part, really, that you talked about accountability. Everybody must be accountable really for their actions it doesn't matter where you sit within um you know as a citizen or as an industrialist or whatever it is you need to be accountable for everything that you take i mean it's amazing as well to note that the government is really doing a lot um i like the the one health paradigm so which is really really good to know that lagos state isn't sitting still um this is uh, an issue on the front burner and you know the government is doing its its bit to 
um, you know, counter and work with um, their global counterparts as well as, um, you know, local counterparts to get uh, this going. We really appreciate your presence. And um, on behalf of the organizers, we want to say a huge thank you for gracing this um, uh, summit and we wish you a speedy recovery um, as well. Thank you so much for participating.